All right, guys, let's get in to this triple Crimson King structure deck deck profile. I tried to make this as close to a Resonator build and somewhat of a show accurate Jack Atlas deck profile. So kicking things off, we've got triple copies of Vision Resonator. This is a really awesome card because if a level five or higher dark monster is on the field, doesn't matter if you control it or not, uh, you can special summon this card from your hand you can only special summon Vision Resonator once per turn this way. And then if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one spell or trap that mentions Red Dragon Archfiend from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Vision Resonator once per turn. So it's really awesome to be able to get into some of your spell cards and trap cards, as well as some of your other monsters. So really awesome. Must play three of it in the deck. And then we've got triple copies of the other new card, Soul Resonator. Soul Resonator is really cool, because if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a level 4 or lower fiend monster from your deck to your hand, except Soul Resonator. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn from the extra deck, except Dark Synchro Monsters, which doesn't matter because pretty much all of our Synchro Monsters here are dark. And then... Uh, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead when a monster you control would be destroyed by a card effect uh, while you control Red Dragon, Archfiend, or a Synchro monster that mentions it. So, it's still a pretty cool effect as well. It gives you a bit of protection. You can only use each effect of Soul Resonator once per turn. And then we've got triple copies of Crimson Resonator. This is another 3 of Resonator monster. Um, this card is a bread and butter for red dragons, um, and definitely a staple of Jack Atlas. So if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand, uh, which is really awesome because it's got a mini cyber dragon-esque effect. And then if the only mo other monster you control is exactly one dark dragon synchro monster, you can special summon up to two resonator monsters from your hand or deck, except crimson resonator. This effect also comes up as well, and it helps you climb into your higher level synchros, which is really cool. And then you can only use each effect of Crimson Resonator once per turn, and you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters the turn you activate either of this card's effect. Again, that doesn't matter because all of our synchro monsters here are Dark Dragons. Moving on to another three ofs, we have triple copies of Bone Archfiend. This card's really cool because you can discard a card to special summon it. So you can pretty much discard any of your Resonator monsters um, that have graveyard effects and use their effects uh, right away off the discard. But uh, moving on with the rest of this effect, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can send one other card. Uh, from your hand or field to the graveyard and special summon this card. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters. You can target one face up monster you control that has a level and send one Fiend Tuner from your hand or deck to the graveyard, and if you do, increase or decrease that monster's level by one. This also helps you level modulate uh, to get either, in, again, into your higher level synchros or your lower level synchros, which is still really cool. And then you can only use each effect of Bone Archfiend once per turn. And then moving on, this is a card I'm kind of debating on changing it out for one of the other cards in the structure deck. Um, but for now I decided to go with Red Sprinter. Uh, when this card is normal or special summoned while you control no other monsters, you can special summon one level 3 or lower Fiend tuner from your hand or graveyard, and you can only use this effect of Red Sprinter once per turn. Uh, I decided to include this because it does allow you to special summon level 3 or lower fiend tuners, which your resonator monsters are. Um, the only issue with this I have though is that you, your lowest synchro is a level 6, and you don't have level 7 synchros in this deck, um, which is kind of unfortunate. But, I mean, it still works out uh, for you if you're able to get certain lines of play going. But I might change this for uh, one of the other cards. I'll have that on screen. I'm drawing a blank on the name right now. Uh, but let's move on with the rest of our deck. Moving on, we have double copies of Synchron Resonator. This is a really cool card. 
as it lets you, when a Synchro monster is on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Synchron Resonator once per turn this way. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one Resonator monster in your graveyard, except uh, Synchron Resonator, and add it to your hand. So this also helps you recur some of your Resonator monsters from your graveyard, which is really awesome because this deck doesn't really have any other draw power that I'm making it. Um, I mean, we do play Resonator Call It 3 to give us quicker access to our Resonators, uh, but we're not playing extra, so having this to be able to recycle our Resonator monsters from our graveyard is really awesome. And then lastly for the two of Resonator monsters, we have Creation Resonator. Uh, this is really cool, it just lets you special summon this card from your hand if you control a level 8 or higher Synchro monster. Uh, but it is a level 3 tuner, so it does help you basically climb up into your higher ranks. Like I said, if there was a level 7 Synchro in the deck, that'd be awesome. Uh, and then I went with double copies of Vice Dragon. This is your Cyber Dragon, but for dragons. Uh, if only your opponent controls a monster, special summon this card. But its original attack and defense become halved. Then we have one copy of Red Warg. Uh, when you normal summon a Resonator monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, but its attack becomes halved. This is really cool, because this is your level 6, um, and again, being able to climb into higher level synchros is still really cool, but no need to play more than just one. Uh, and then lastly, for our monsters and our Resonator cards, we have the one Dark Resonator, uh, the first time this card would be destroyed by battle this turn, it is not. And then you have one red resonator, which when this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one level 4 or lower monster from your hand. And when this card is special summoned, you can target one face up monster on the field, gain life points equal to its attack, and you can only use this effect of red resonator once per turn. That concludes our monster lineup. Let's move on to the spells got triple copies of Crimson Gaia. This is probably your best spell in the deck. Uh, during your main phase, you can add one Red Dragon Archfiend or one card that mentions it from your deck or graveyard to your hand, except Crimson Gaia. When your Red Dragon Archfiend declares an attack, you can change all monsters your opponent controls to face down defense position. If a monster or monsters on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one Red Dragon Archfiend from your graveyard. You can only use each effect of Crimson Gaia once per turn. It's a really awesome card. Uh, helps get you started, helps pretty much interrupt your opponent. Uh, next up, we have triple copies of Resonator Call. Uh, we play so many Resonators, and we definitely want to be able to search some of them out. Um, so triple Resonator Call to add a Resonator monster from your deck to your hand is amazing and a must for this deck, no matter what variation you're playing. And then we have double copies of Resonator Engine rounding out our spell cards. Uh, this lets you target two Resonator monsters in your graveyard and add one level 4 monster from your deck to your hand, and if you do, return those targets to the deck. Again, this is good for recycling your resonators, making sure that you get some extra draw power, and uh, making sure that you always have resonator cards in your deck. So playing it at two is really good. Moving on to our trap cards, we have the one copy of King Synchro. So when your opponent's monster declares an attack on a Synchro monster you control, negate the attack, then you can apply the rest of this card's effect. Banish that Synchro Monster you control and one tuner from your graveyard, and if you do, special summon from your extra deck one Synchro Monster whose level equals the total levels of the banished monsters, and this is treated as a Synchro Summon. So just really cool. Uh, generic interruption um, for Synchros, which is still really awesome. Now we've got Red Zone, which is probably one of, if not your best trap card. Uh, when your opponent activates a card or effect while you control a Red Dragon Archfiend or Synchro Monster that mentions it, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. And then you can target one of your banished Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters and Special Summon it. You can only use each effect of Red Zone once per turn. 
And then we've got one copy of Fiendish Chain. This goes with your triple copies of Fiendish Golem, as Fiendish Golem lets you target a monster on the field with 2,000 or more attack and banish it till the end phase of the next turn. Then, if you activated this card while you controlled Red Dragon Archfiend or a Synchro Monster that mentions it, you can set one Fiendish Chain directly from your deck. So, this definitely helps out with your interruptions. Fiendish Chain definitely helps out with your interruptions as well. Um, by pretty much negating a monster's effect, and then that monster cannot uh, attack. So, still pretty awesome. Uh, helping you stall out a little bit, especially with this deck, as there isn't too, too much power going into it. Um, where you can just... Turns take a lot of setup, is pretty much all I'm trying to say. Uh, and then lastly, to round off our deck, we have double copies of Red Rain. If you control a level 8 or higher Synchro Monster, banish all monsters on the field, except monsters with the highest level. Also, the remaining phase-up monsters on the field are unaffected by other cards' effects, except their own, until the end of this turn. And then, if a Dark Dragon Synchro Monster is Synchro Summoned to your field, this card, while this card is in your graveyard, you can add this card to your hand, and you can only use... Uh, the effect of Red Rain once per turn, or at least that effect of Red Rain once per turn. And that rounds off our main deck. This is a 40 card deck. Like I said, there are probably some changes I'll make, uh, but let's move on to the extra deck. Starting things off, triple copies of Red Rising Dragon. This is one of your best cards, so must play it at 3. Uh, requires one Fiend Tuner and one plus non-Tuner monsters. When this card is Synchro Summoned, you can target one Resonator monster in your graveyard and Special Summon it. You cannot Special Summon monsters from the extra deck except Dark Dragons, um, which is totally fine, like I said. Uh, during your main phase, except the turn that this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card uh, from your graveyard, then target two level 1 Resonator monsters in your graveyard and Special Summon both of them. So, like I said, really awesome card. Uh, lets you climb up into your higher level Synchros. And then we've got double copies of Red Dragon Archfiend. Um, you could probably play this at 1, but for now I'm playing it at 2 just to fill up some space. Uh, because we don't have a level 7 Synchro, uh, which this deck could easily make if we did have it. Um, requires 1 tuner and 1 plus non-tuner monster. After damage calculation, if this card attacked an opponent's defense position monster, destroy all defense position monsters your opponent controls. Then, once per turn, during your end phase, destroy all other monsters you control that did not declare an attack this turn. This card must be face-up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. I've got double copies of Red Supernova Dragon. This is another one of your level 12s um, that can be kind of hard to summon, but at the same time, I mean, it does provide a bit of protection. Must first be Synchro Summoned, it gains 500 attack for each tuner in your graveyard, cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Once per turn, when your opponent's monster effect is activated, or when an opponent's monster declares an attack, quick effect, you can activate this effect and banish this card. Also banish all cards your opponent controls. Once per turn, during your next M, or next M by phase after this card was banished by its own effect, special summon this banished card. It's a really awesome mini boss monster, and definitely helps you interrupt and protect. Um, and then we've got double copies of your Scar Red, uh, or Scarred Dragon Archfiend. So this card's name becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while on the field or in the graveyard, and if this card is sent from the monster zone to the graveyard, you can special summon one Red Dragon Archfiend from your extra deck. This is treated as a Synchro Summon. And then, if this card was sent to the graveyard as synchro material for a dark synchro monster, which is totally fine, or dark dragon synchro monster, um, you can destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls. You can only use this effect of Scarred Dragon Archfiend once per turn. And then we've got double copies of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Um, this is a really awesome negate card and a uh, really good boss monster as well. Um, so, quick effect, 
you can target one face-up card your opponent controls, negate the effect until the end of this turn. And then when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target one tuner in your graveyard, special summon it in defense position. You can only use each effect of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss once per turn. And then we have double copies of our Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane. Again, probably don't need to play this at 2, uh, but for now I'm playing it at 2, and this is a level 10, um, which does require a non-tuner Dark Dragon Synchro Monster, much like our Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. And then, but you can tribute uh, one monster one monster, then target one Red Dragon Archfiend monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Um, and then when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, uh, you can special summon two tuners with the same level, one from your deck and one from your graveyard in defense position, which is really awesome because this can help you uh, get into your level 12s. And then you can only use each effect of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane once per turn. Then lastly, for our level 12s at least, we have the one Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity, which is pretty much just a turn skip. Uh, when this card is Synchro Summoned, you can activate this effect for the rest of this turn. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects on the field. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effect's activation. And then if this card destroys a monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. And then if this card in its owner's position is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target one level 8 or lower Dark Dragon Synchro Monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So, really awesome. And then lastly, for our extra deck, we have the one Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend. Uh, this card's name becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while on the field or in the graveyard. And then once per turn, you can destroy as many other special summoned effect monsters on the field as possible with the attack less than or equal to this card. Then inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed. So, really awesome card to have as well. Um, but no need to really play two of them, especially because, like I said, I'm not playing Xtrav in this deck. Um, but there are some changes that I'll probably make in the future. Um, but we'll see. I do really like this deck, and I think that this is pretty close to what Jack Atlas would play. Um, and I wanted to keep it as close to the Resonator archetype as I possibly could, um, while incorporating Red Dragon as well, as they're pretty much part one and the same. So...